Greetings and welcome. Thank you for coming to today's public debate. As one of the most essential components of debate is defining terms, we will therefore stick with the rules and define debate today as an activity to enrich and engage the intellect of both our debaters and you, the audience. And it will hopefully result in more knowledge of the given topic all around. Debate is a topic and debate is a process that involves informed debaters to inform their audience. This has been the goal of debate throughout history, from the 1776 Continental Congress to the Lincoln-Douglas debates, and even to the first televised debate between Nixon and Kennedy. To explore the sides of a topic with respect for the opponents and to enlighten each other. As with any format, public or other debates, be aware that these individuals are empowered on knowledge and knowledgeable on topics that have demanded significant preparation. They're here to empower and enlighten you. In the end, it is not about who wins or loses, but instead about how empowered you become. In this public debate, you will see two sides. You will see an affirmative side, which will uphold the resolution, and the negative side, which will reject the resolution. Please join me in welcoming the negative team to the floor. And now, their opponents, the affirmative team. <laughs> Debaters, you may be seated. You will see in this debate two styles of speeches, constructive and rebuttal. Your constructive speeches are to present the arguments for debate, as we will soon hear from our affirmative constructive speaker, Ray Barnett. Ray. Ignorance has descended upon the American populace like a ravenous wolf pack, devouring our empathy and enabling various oligarchs to marionette our brains. Consequently, we have come to the resolution that American culture is in decline. Our first contention for our resolution is that environmental conditions continue to deteriorate in America. Our initial argument in support of that contention states that climate change has become a partisan issue in America. In the 1990s, ExxonMobil backed a massive public relations campaign to sow doubt about climate science, take out advertisements to that end, and lobby elected officials. Eventually, the idea that climate science was up for debate became a key talking point. Although George Bush Sr. helped launch the international framework for addressing climate change, ExxonMobil cajoled many American Republican politicians to minimize and or completely deny the gravity of climate change due to the business-friendly reputation of, his, of their party. Consequently, climate change became an intractably divisive issue in American politics. Our final argument confirming the deterioration of American environmental conditions is the decline of nature appreciation in America. Parents say their children spend three times as many hours with computers and TVs each week as they do playing outside. Between 1990 and 2000, participation in youth fishing groups dropped by 26%. In addition, involvement in youth hunting groups dropped by 8%. As children are becoming increasingly detached from nature, environmental conservation efforts are quickly losing support. Having completed our initial contention, which addressed the deterioration of American environmental conditions, we will transition into our second contention, in which we will concentrate on the decline of American education. Our first argument to confirm the decay of American education consists of the fact that economic barriers impede the pursuit of education in America. According to the Huffington Post, Norway, Germany, Finland, and Denmark all offer free higher education. France charges tuition, but it is practically complimentary, and the former communist nations such as Argentina and Brazil provide free higher education. Additionally, the excessive cost of tuition limits a student's ability to attend private institutions. The fact that standardized tests in America do not reflect actual knowledge comprises our second argument for the decline of American education. First and foremost, multiple choice tests do not help students generate answers. They merely provide the students with several answers from which to choose. Standardized tests cannot measure initiative, creativity, imagination, conceptual thinking, curiosity, 
effort, irony, judgment, commitment, goodwill, ethical reflection, or a host of other valuable attributes. Moreover, standardized test scores do not demonstrate long-term advancements in American education. According to a 2001 study published by Brookings Institution, 50 to 80% of annual improvements on standardized test scores were ephemeral and not correlated with any long-term progress. Our third argument for the deterioration of American education is that test scores imply a diminishing in American intelligence. In 2015, America ranked a mediocre 38th out of 71 countries on the PISA test in mathematics and 24th out of 71 countries on the PISA test in science. According to American News, the average mathematical ability of the American citizen has been plummeting since 2009. Overall, American students were outperformed by their counterparts in 36 countries in mathematics, 18 countries in science, and 14 countries in literacy. Our final contention states that the limiting of immigration into America detriments American culture. Our first argument in support of our final contention proposes that immigration into America played an integral role in American history. Daniel Griswold, co-director of the Program on the American Economy and Globalization at George Mason University, states that we are a nation of immigrants and successive waves of immigration have kept our country demographically young, enriched our culture, and added to our productive capacity as a nation which enhanced our influence in the world. The American Immigration Council addresses the fact that immigration is inextricably a part of the American national identity as immigrants were crucial to groundbreaking American accomplishments, including the construction of the Erie Canal, the Brooklyn Bridge, and the Transcontinental Railroad. Consequently, our second argument in support of our third contention is that new legislation restricting immigration is detrimental to American culture. Nevertheless, a recently proposed bill intends to restrict the number of foreign nationals who have access to green cards to be reunited with their families, decrease the number of refugees admitted into our country by 50%, and eliminate the diversity visa lottery, which provides visas for countries with low rates of immigration. Unfortunately, the American government plans to enact this bill within a decade, and enacting this bill will impact the American culture in two pertinent ways. The first way that restricting immigration sabotages American culture is that immigration into America bolsters the American economy. Without a doubt, America's longest economic expansion would have ended prematurely had immigrants not filled positions where native-born Americans were too scarce. The second way that enacting this bill will damage American culture is the fact that enacting this bill will diminish American innovation. According to the Patent Office, immigrants are producing new innovations at twice the rate of native-born Americans. Furthermore, the National Venture Capital Association claims that immigrants establish 25% of public American countries, including Google, eBay, Yahoo, and Intel. For these reasons, we entreat you to support our claim that American culture sheds more of its luster with each passing hour. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. We will now hear from Megan Pickerell, the, uh, the negative constructive speaker. Megan. Good afternoon. My colleagues are resolved that the American culture is in decline. We contend that it is not. Rather, American culture is advancing. We will use three examples to support that American culture is stronger than ever. Our first contention is that changes in civil liberties are improving American culture. Civil rights laws have led to a diverse America. In an article published in the US Federal News Service, the US Secretary of Education stated, Quote, the benefits of diversity extend beyond academics. In today's world, your boss may not look like you. Your office mate may not worship like you. Your neighbor may not speak the same language as you. And your customer may not live on the same continent as you. In addition, the workplace is becoming more diverse. According to the Human Rights Quarterly, companies are looking to recruit and retain the best candidates and are expanding their diversity initiatives to include not only race and gender, but also other factors such as age, 
economic background, religion, disability status, culture, and even work style. Finally, information about human rights issues is improving. The Human Rights Quarterly published an article stating, quote, documentation of government's human rights practices in recent decades has increased dramatically in quantity and in quality. Recent reports from non-governmental organizations like Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch, among others, and government sources like the US Department of State now typically contain much more and better information than earlier reports. More recent reports also tend to document a wider range of human rights violations. Our second contention is that technology is enhancing American culture. First, social media improves the overall demeanor of Americans. An expert in social media behavior, Amanda Lenhart, featured in a 2017 article by Haley Tutskiyama in the Washington Post, executed a study and found that the side effect of suspending someone from social media is taking away from potential emotional support and from access to information. That's not just what's happening in friends' lives, which is one component, but it's also hard news and current events. There's a lot of layers around social media use, and it's important for everyone to realize there's more there than meets the eye. It sounds like someone's on social media right now. <laughs> Technological progress is also advancing American health care. According to a 2017 Wall Street Journal article by Brett Swanson and Michael Mandel, a health care upheaval is on the horizon in which uh, sensors will automatically communicate with doctors and other health care professionals and provide detailed medical information for databases and help advance medical care and cut down on doctors' appointments. Swanson says, quote, robots will assist in more surgeries, Body imaging will get better and cheaper, and 3D printed pills and artificial organs will be added to the doctor's toolkit. Lastly, technology has created jobs for Americans. A 2017 Wall Street Journal article by Greg Ipp shows that the fear of technology diminishing the job market is baseless. James Besson, an economist at Boston University School of Law, has found in numerous episodes when technology was supposed to annihilate jobs, the opposite occurred. After the first automated tellers were installed in the 1970s, an executive at Wells Fargo and Company predicted ATMs would lead to fewer branches and even fewer staff. And indeed, the average branch used one third fewer workers from 2004 than in 1988. But Mr. Besson found ATMs made it cheaper to operate a branch, so banks opened even more branches. Total branches rose 43% over that time. Even though the branches needed fewer staff, numerous jobs were created in every job field from construction to computer installation. Our third and final contention is that it is part of American culture to set a global standard in humanitarian aid. America is the world leader in humanitarian aid efforts. According to a 2016 World Ho White House press brief on the World Humanitarian Su Summit, the United States is the world's largest single assistance donor with contributions of $26 billion in the last five, six fiscal years. Further evidence comes from the World Economic Forum. The U.S. is the most generous country in the world when it comes to foreign aid. Furthermore, America is showing an upward trend in the admittance of refugees. According to the Pew Research Center, the U.S. admitted more refugees in 2016 than in any of the previous eight years. Not only that, but refugees are positively contributing to American culture. Jeffrey Sachs, director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University and senior UN advisor told PBS News, for the US on net, it's positive because there are gains when people come and add to the labor market and add skills and generally earn less than what they can contribute to society as a whole. In conclusion, we hope you will join us in supporting our resolution that American culture is advancing as evidenced by progression in civil liberties, advancements in technology, and global leadership in humanitarian aid efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Following the presentation of both constructive speeches now, we will hear the second style of speech, which is rebuttal. 
The obligation of a, of a rebuttalist is to counter their opposition's arguments while restating their original constructive or negative contentions due to their respective sides. We will hear first from our first affirmative rebuttalist, Juan Villagram. Juan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As the first affirmative rebuttalist, I would like to start by countering the negative team's claims, followed by restating our claims, which, which support the resolution that the American culture is indeed in decline. We'd like to start by addressing their first contention, which states that changes in civil liberties are improving American culture. Their first argument states that civil rights laws have led to a diverse America. Earlier, Megan stated that in today's world, your boss may not look like you, your office mate may not worship like you, etc. However, we, would, we must oppose this statement because we found that as America became a more diverse nation, there was problems of racial discrimination, which were endured by minority groups. Their second argument claims that the workplace is becoming more diverse. Earlier, the negative team argued that companies are looking to recruit and retain the best workers as well as expand their diversity. We would like to counter this with studies that show that companies actually view hiring people who seem different from the majority of their employees as somehow lowering the bar. Having this limiting mindset negatively impacts their ability to recruit and to build generally diverse workforce. For example, according to LinkedIn's annual workplace diversity report, among the company's 6,345 employees, 5% are Latino and 3% are Black. Their last argument states that information about human rights issues is improving. Earlier, Megan from the negative team stated that documentation of government's human rights practices in recent decades has increased dramatically in quantity and in quality. We would like to refute this because right tragedies can be observed worldwide and in any country, that, including the United States. There's most likely a tragedy you'll uncover that seriously violates international laws and standards, but several of these instances are law. This leads to the next team's second contention. The next argument is that nature appreciation in America has diminished. However, according to a Yale University study, um, this is not so. In fact, um, environmental appreciation in America has increased by 3.8%. The next contention that I would like to address is that American, edu uh, American education is in decline. The, fir um, the first argument for this is that economic barriers limit the involvement, of, um, it, the involvement in private schools. Though private schools are in fact in, uh, expensive, there's many scholarships that um, are available and received by students that go to these schools. The AAA scholarship, um, for instance, um, gave out $8.5 million in um, scholarships to students. The next argument that I would like to address is that standardized testing is not reflecting actual knowledge. However, this is, standardized testing is very important for teachers um, so that they can assess their students' um, skill and their retention of knowledge. Um, their next argument that I would like to refute is that tests reflect a decline in intelligence. However, this contradicts their previous um, argument that states standardized testing is re not reflecting actual knowledge. So one of them can, cannot be true. Um, the next contention that I would like to address is that limiting immigration has had a negative impact on American culture. Um, the first argument that they have for this is that um, immigration is an integral part of American history. Well, it still is. Immigration um, is, uh, according to the US News and World Reports, uh, the United States of America is one of the best places to travel and to be an immigrant. Um, the next argument that I would like to address is that new legislation placing um, restriction on immigration is damaging to the American culture. Um, as we have seen throughout history, if legis American history specifically, if legislation is um, not good, it will be amended or repealed. 
um, hence the, all the amendments. Um, the next argument that I would like to address is that immigrants contribute to um, innovative technologies in America. However, immigration, I would like to refute this by stating that immigration of highly skilled foreign citizens in the United States is um, damaging to United States foreign relations because um, the, the, we need intelligent people in foreign places to have those proper relations with the foreign countries. Now that I have um, refuted all the arguments of my opponent's team, the, the affirmative team, I would like to reaffirm those of my own team. Um, the first contention that I would like to reaffirm is that changes in civil liberties are improving American culture. The first argument for this contention is that civil rights laws have led to a diverse America. Um, my opponent's team um, contradicted this by stating that racism is a negative result um, of having a diverse America. However, despite this, um, there are large numbers of diverse people that still desire to live in the US. So this cannot be a true um, argument. The next argument that I would like to um, reaffirm is that the workplace is becoming more diverse. My opponent's team, specifically one, um, argued this um, by naming a LinkedIn report that states that um, the workplace is in fact not diverse. However, in a Fortune, in a Fortune 500 um, report, Old Navy is among 50, more than 50 companies that have significant percentages of diverse um, people including Latin Americans, um, African Americans, and Asians. Um, the next argument that I'd like to reaffirm for, from my team is the information about hu um, human rights is improving. Um, my opponent's team contradicted this argument by stating that um, these human rights tragedies can be observed worldwide and in any country. However, this contradiction actually reaffirms my argument. So therefore, um, my argument must be true. <laughs> um, the, next, the next argument for this contention that I would like to address is that technological progress is also advancing American healthcare. Um, my one, um, <laughs> sorry, one uh, in my opponent's team, uh, contradicted this by stating that um, relying on technology is producing um, a generation of healthcare workers that are undereducated. However, medical students now, because they need to um, learn about technology in addition to eight or more years of medical school, um, are even smarter than before. So this claim cannot be true. Um, the last argument for this contention that I'd like to address is that technology has created jobs for Americans. Um, wrote, uh, my, the, my opponent's team contradicted this by stating that robots um, are taking these um, jobs from Americans. However, it is true that um, robots are in greater profusion these days. However, they actually make more jobs for, um, for Americans, as uh, Megan has already stated. The next contention that I would like to reaffirm on, from my team is that American culture is on the rise in humanitarian efforts. Um, the first argument is that America is the world leader in humanitarian aid. Um, Juan contradicted this by stating that when total expense expenditures are considered for foreign, foreign aid, America is, is the world leader. However, this again also reaffirms my claim. So my claim again must be true. The next, um, the next claim that I would like to reaffirm is that America is showing an upward trend in the admittance of refugees. Um, my opponent's team contradicted this by stating that new, legisla new legislation proposes proposes, mind you, to decrease new, um, uh, the number of refugees admitted to the country by 50%. However, this has not been passed yet as it was only proposed. 
Therefore, it is still true that America is showing an upward trend in the admittance of refugees. Now that I have reaffirmed all the arguments from um, my team, the negative team, I would like to conclude by saying that I hope you all will agree with my team's um, arguments as they have, been pr they have proved that American culture is not, is not in decline. Thank you. Thank you, my debater, Christopher. <laughs> we will now hear from our second rebuttalists. These are the final rebuttalists of the debate. First, we will hear from Ms. Elizabeth Risk. She, her job is to finalize the arguments of her team and to summarize the debate. Liz Elizabeth. As the final affirmative rebuttalist, my job today is to summarize the entire debate. Our team would like to begin by once again refuting the allegations of the negative team. The opposing team's first contention is that changes in civil liberties are improving American culture. We disagreed with this statement because as our team has previously addressed, in our age of hashtag activism, it is both easy to remember and forget human rights tragedies happening across the globe. We cannot allow ourselves to forget that there, that there is a constant struggle for equality in the workplace, among social classes, and in society as a whole. Diversity is no longer just a black or white, male or female, young or old issue. It is much more complicated and intricate, requiring it to be addressed at every level. It became evident through the counterclaims of our affirmative team that the American government refuses to acknowledge pressing human rights issues across the globe because of their focus on their own self-interest and benefit in making alliances with strong leaders in other countries. This America First platform puts little emphasis on human rights. Lack of advancements in civil rights in our nation is detrimental to our ability to be open to changes that will enhance the American culture. This leads us to the team's to the negative team second contention stating that technology is enhancing American culture. We have refuted this because studies that we presented earlier confirmed that many, many people are developing a social media dependency. This reliance enables the internet to become their only form of socialization, which leads to a social media addiction for the vast majority of the American populace. Our culture was founded on the interaction and collaboration of individuals that society has started to diminish. This detracts from the diplomatic abilities required to be a successful culture and nation. I would like to bring us back to the counter argument introduced by my colleague Juan, which demonstrated that Americans are not qualified for high tech professions being created by the implementation of technology in the workforce, which is forcing us to outsource jobs. Evidence confirms the statement that Americans lack the necessary education for those high-tech professions as the majority of those positions are being held by employees in foreign countries. In regards to Chris, Chris's statement on the opposing team about medical school training and technology, current doctors have actually observed that what should be a 90% clinical diagnosis and a 10% reliance on technology for a confirmation of that diagnosis is now becoming an 80% clinical diagnosis to a 20% um, dependency on technology for the confirmation of that diagnosis. This is creating a dependency of our doctors on their technology for their diagnosis. This is taking away from their from the art of medicine, excuse me, and their intelligence as our doctors. This leads us to the negative team's final contention, which is that part of American culture is to set a global standard for humanitarian efforts. We, would, we have opposed this because as Juan addressed earlier, Angus Deaton, who is the newest winner of the Nobel Prize and, and an economist at Princeton University, argues that the United States gives aid for us and not for them to support our strategic allies, our commer commercial interests, our moral or political beliefs, rather than the interests of the local people. Our collective ethical deficit as a nation enables us to feign compassion for personal gain, which remains incongruent with our cultural values. Chris also claimed that we supported their, their argument that the U.S. is the world leader in humanitarian aid. Actually, we did not. 
as Juan said earlier, we refuted this because when the U.S. is humanitarian aid is considered in terms of national or gross national income, we are not even in the top 10. After addressing the contentions of the negative team, I would like to advocate for your support once again of the arguments of our team supporting the resolution that the American culture is in decline. Our first contention proposed by the affirmative team is that the environmental conditions continue to deteriorate in America. Our culture spirals towards destruction destruction because of our consumeristic ideals. The fact that environmental condition is no longer a bipartisan issue is of great concern because the well-being of our environment should be addressed by all leaders in our nation. Even though Chris on the opposing team suggested that the environment is not a bipartisan concern, the numerical evidence which he provided actually contradicted his claim. And it showed that over 42% more Democratic politicians than Republican politicians expressed concern about climate change. The shift to technology for, in, for entertainment is diminishing children's outdoor activities. This is causing a depreciation of nature and the outdoors, which is a grave matter because our future generations will not find value in preserving our environment. This leads us to our second contention that addresses why the American culture is in decline, which addresses American education, excuse me. Our country's methods of evaluation have proved to be inaccurate. Our focus on multiple choice tests detriments a student's ability to think critically and actually shows a downward trend in intelligence. In regards to the cost of education, although Chris on the negative team attempted to refute this with the notion that scholarships are abundantly available, the Student Loan Heroes evaluation proved that Amer as Americans, we owe over $1.45 trillion in student loan debt. And that is spread out about over about 44 million borrowers. That's about $620 billion more than the total US credit card debt. In fact, the average class of 2016 graduate has $37,172 in student loan debt, which is an up 6% from last year. In comparison to other countries, America is falling short in education. Not only is it extremely difficult and expensive to obtain an education here, but the quality of our education is mediocre in comparison to other parts of the world. America must maintain international and supremacy and respect. And in order to do this, we must produce more thoroughly educated individuals who will cease our downward cultural trend and invigorate our nation. Our final contention states that limiting immigration has a negative impact on American culture. Immigrants are integral to the history of our nation and foundational to the American identity. Immigrants have kept our country demographically young, they have enriched our culture, and they have added to our productive capacity as a nation, enhancing our overall influence in the world. New legislation plans to greatly restrict immigration into our nation, which is very damaging to the American culture. Even though Chris stated that, the American, that America is one of the top places to immigrate to, this will become increasingly difficult with the new restrictions that legislation is placing on immigration which will make his claim irrelevant because immigrating will no longer be a realistic option for so many. Immigrants' productivity and contributions are simply beneficial and crucial to our economy and our society. America is fueled by efficiency, innovation, and technology. Immigrants provide the tools necessary to make this possible. We implore you to support the resolution that the American culture is in decline because the evidence supporting this is simply indisputable. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. We will now hear from our final rebuttalist, who is from the negative team, Ms. Killian Hayes-George. Killian? Thank you all for coming. As the second negative rebuttalist, I will be proving that the American culture is not in decline by refuting the nine arguments of the affirmative team and reaffirming the eight arguments of my team. The three contentions the affirmative team provided revolve around the environment, education, and immigration. And first, I will be responding to the contention that environmental conditions continue to deteriorate in America. 
Studies and, st studies and statistics are currently showing an uptick in American envi environmentalism. The affirmative team has claimed that it's not beneficial to have at least 50% of Republicans and Democrats interested in climate change. This brings such a high amount of visibility and funding to the issue of climate change. So being a, pi being a bipartisan issue is truly a positive thing. And as Chris stated, there's a 3.8% improvement in our environmental performance index. And this shows definitively that nature appreciation is improving. Other countries on this list have a negative or downward trend over the last 10 years. And this is what we would see in the American statistics if this claim were true, that nature appreciation in America was truly in decline. And now I will discuss their second contention, that American education is in decline. Our evidence has shown the opposite. Americans care more about education today than ever before. The massive scholarships that are awarded, awarded by multiple foundations provide millions and millions of dollars to students in need all throughout the world. The affirmative team mentioned the high amount of student loans that are in America right now. And this may be due to the fact that a lot of students don't know about the availability of these scholarships. Standardized tests are inconvenient, but they are necessary. They tell us our shortcomings and our triumphs in America. <clears throat> and these have led to the highest graduation rates in American history. We've been able to improve our, edu our educational system. Receiving a diploma makes a student's life easier for both job and college opportunities. This increase implies that education is becoming more important to America. And finally, I will respond to the contention that limiting immigration has a negative impact on American culture. Migration is a part of our past, present, and future in America. It's a fundamental part of America, and it will always be here. As Chris stated, we're ranking in the top 10 out of the most friendly countries for immigrants to come to in 2017. The statistic shows that we're still embracing Americans and they feel comfortable to come here. My opponents previously referenced American history. If we apply the same information from American history, we see the United States was not ashamed to correct any laws that harm innocent people. We're very concerned <clears throat> with, the human with humanity on a worldwide scale. It's also important to realize the implications of foreign countries losing their most innovative and highly skilled workers to America. They stated that immigrants are providing double the amount of patents that natural born Americans are, and that's great for us, but what is that doing to those countries where these immigrants are coming from? It's creating what we call a brain drain. They are losing their, their highly skilled individuals and we are gaining them. This may result in hostility from other nations towards America. Through this evidence, we hope to have proved to you that American culture is, in, is actually improving via the environment, education, and immigration policies, despite what the affirmative team have claimed. And to end this debate, I will reiterate the many ways American culture is being enhanced through our three contentions regarding civil rights, technology, and humanitarian efforts. Our first contention is that changes in civil liberties are improving American culture. The amount of unavoid unavoidable diversity in America is beautiful. You can go anywhere and find someone who is the complete opposite of you. That is truly the epitome of America. And because we have so many different types of Americans, we have so many different types of American workers. If a customer comes into a business and they don't speak English, it can be so comforting for them to see a um, an employee who speaks Spanish or knows sign language. This shows that the workplace truly cares about catering to their diverse clientele by having a diverse workplace, and it really enhances the workplace. And our second contention is that technology is enhancing American culture. Social media is a gateway to a more stimulating life. While you're sitting on a park bench waiting for your friend to show up, you can look up, who was the fifth president of the United States? I think it was James Monroe. Or you can see that your niece just graduated high school or see the awesome <coughs> job, <coughs> the awesome job that your friend from college just got. Indulging yourself in these small victories can brighten your day, and we're more connected than ever before through, these, through social media, despite what the affirmative team has said. And technology isn't just limited to social media and smartphones, it also improves healthcare. Technology improves accuracy, speed, and cleanliness in the healthcare field. Throughout history, we've seen technolog technological advances like MRI machines and the polio vaccine save millions of lives. The possibilities are endless with technology, and I think we'll see many more pro progressions like this improve healthcare in the coming years. As Megan proved, it is a fallacy that, job that technology takes away jobs. Many technological advancements 
enhance the job field, and create jobs. They claim that these jobs are only for highly skilled individuals, but that's not true. They're not limited to them. All, all jobs are enhanced from glass installation to accounting. <clears throat> And we will not allow technology to rule our lives. As Nobel Prize winner Christian Lewis Lang said, technology is a useful servant and a dangerous master. As long as we don't allow technology to rule our lives, it will remain a useful asset in the human's toolkit. And our last contention is that part of American culture is to set a global standard for humanitarian aid efforts. We're the world leader in humanitarian aid donations. And the fundamental value of America is generosity. And we see this continue to date through those aid amounts. America is a safe haven for many refugees who are seeking escape from any type of persecution. This country was actually founded by refugees seeking a better life, and America inspires these refugees to become part of their new communities and allow our culture to permeate and enhance their lives. Christopher, Megan, and I have shown you the many ways American culture has been on the rise, specifically in terms of civil rights, technology, and humanitarian efforts. We urge you to reject the resolution that the American culture is in decline. We hope you've enjoyed this debate, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Killian. What you've seen here is one of the most critical elements to American or any other culture. It has been civil discourse. It's been respectful, and it's been an ex exploration of a relevant topic. Both teams have had informed opinions about one topic, which they shared with us today with confidence in their own opinions, but also tolerance of their opponent's contentions. This increased critical, respectful analysis has been the object of debate throughout our culture, both past, present, and now hopefully future as we hoped to have persuaded you to continue analyzing relevant topics with criticism, but also with respect. Thank you very much for coming.